I have clicked onto the Global Tropical Area for January the 16th, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the athletic pressure are mine alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look toward your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So I've got a few systems to talk about today. I'll leave timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead to any of the systems that you want to see. But we're going to start off with Cyclone, or sorry, not Cyclone anymore, Severe Tropical Cyclone Bilal, as it is now pushing away from La Reunion and Mauritius. You can see it here on the satellite imagery. And I'll go to the non-colored one so you can see my pen a little bit better. But you can see it, the core now well southeast of the island of, of La Reunion. We do still have some strong thunderstorms over Mauritius as the morning hours begin. Uh, but the overall most significant part of the storm is now moving away. Now, we've had a lot of significant impacts across both of these islands. Uh, we had lots of heavy rainfall across both. I've seen pictures of flooding from both islands and it looks to be pretty significant in La Reunion I believe I saw a, a rainfall total in the past day over 700 millimeters of rainfall which is an absolutely incredible amount of rainfall for those who may not be familiar with a, a millimeters that is over two feet of rainfall in a day and that is the extreme uh, rainfall amounts and hopefully the flooding is not nearly as bad as the images looked, but from what I saw, it did look uh, pretty bad there. Uh, the system is still struggling. The system continued to struggle last night. Something I forgot to mention in my video uh, yesterday was alongside the shear being stronger here east of uh, Madagascar, we also had the jet streak southeast of the storm on approach a bit weaker than forecast uh, on guidance. And so that allow the system to feel those effects of that shear even more. And now we do finally have a jet streak in place. You can see that there. We've got all this upper level cirrus streaming away, but the system is still heavily disrupted on its inner core. This is a recent microwave pass that we got over the system, and you can see here's the inner core. We still have the eastern part of the core, but the western side remains fully open. Uh, and now the system has been getting a little bit better. We had a microwave pass about two hours before this one that showed a little bit of a significant tilt in height between the low level and mid-level center. But if I outline the mid-level center here and the low level center, you can see there is still a tilt, but it looks like it might've gotten a bit better from that microwave pass uh, that I'm looking at here on my other screen. Uh, so you can see that tilt there. Now, Something did change as well between these two microwave passes. I wish I pulled it up on on the this main screen that I'm recording on, but it also had a fully built western core on that pass a couple of hours ago. But now you can see in this one, the western core is back to being busted open. So the system had some improvement maybe with the tilt, but not so much with convection. The shear is still certainly having a significant impact on it. And you can see that here, very strong westerly flow and this is now teetering on this on the end of higher end shear for a tropical cyclone this is probably getting to about 20 knots by now very significant shear for a tropical cyclone now this shear will likely weaken as it continues to move towards the southeast and there might be room for a little bit of reintensification as the system does come southeast. But eventually, the system is going to stall here south of Rodrigues. And once that happens, the waters will likely be getting too cool for the system to sustain itself and will likely start seeing significant weakening uh, after that. Uh, this is the current forecast track from Mateo, France. You can see severe tropical cyclone right now and some gradual weakening over the next few days. But once the system does stall, like I said, the sea surface temperatures are going to cool off and we'll see more significant weakening. You can see the, the cooling of the sea surface temperatures here on the HAPS model as the system continues southeast. Rodriguez is about here. Once it's south of there, we've already got fairly cool sea surface temperatures for our tropical cyclone, about 26 to 27 degrees Celsius. But you can see once the system stalls, we get much colder sea surface temperatures here. Uh, these green colors are 25 degrees Celsius and cooler. And the minimum requirement for a tropical cyclone is about 26 degrees Celsius. And we even see some cooler water showing up beneath the core on this run. So that will cause a significant weakening trend. And that's good news because we talked about yesterday how there may be some potential for the system to come up towards, say, Mauritius or Rodrigues eventually again in the future 
you can see this forecast cone has that uncertainty here with it extending just about east of Mauritius and including Rodrigues. Uh, but with this weakening, we're not expecting anything strong to come your way. So if the system did come up your way, the most likely impact would be rainfall. But if the environment were favorable, oh, if the system did come north, you can see here the waters are still fairly warm across this region. So I suppose it's possible you could get some slight reintensification. But after stalling for so long over these cooler waters, the system would need a bit of time to recover. Uh, and I don't see a very strong storm coming back from this. I don't see the system really getting to cyclone status again. Uh, now, one last thing uh, for Mauritius, you are still under a class four cyclone warning. I'll reload this to see if there is a new bulletin out. Uh, there is not right now. This is a this is a brand new this is a brand new warning, but we, there's still a class four cyclone warning in in place. And I'd imagine this will start coming down today as the core starts to move away. But this tells you that significant impacts are occurring right now, and it's safest to stay indoors until the warnings are brought down to a lower level or completely uh, taken away as the storm does push away. Uh, but the storm, like I said, is pushing away. This is a satellite imagery. Again, the core is here, and you can see both islands now in the fairly clear zone away from it, but Mauritius still in some strong thunderstorms and conditions will improve throughout the day today as the system does um, push for the southeast. But I hope everyone is safe across these islands, and I hope the damage is not too bad across the islands, uh, unlike what some images may tell, uh, but hopefully recovery is not too bad as we hopefully don't have too much significant uh, damage there across the region. All right, we're now going to move east finally away from Cyclone Bilal as we have three other systems active in the tropics. I'm going to reload this to get the latest uh, visible satellite imagery. You can see we're now positioned southwest of Indonesia. You can see Indonesia there, and these are the Cocos Islands. I believe it's just one island there, the Cocos Island. And you can see the storm here. This has gotten a name from Indonesia, and I need to verify the name on this so I don't forget what it is. But also, I'm probably going to butcher this name, so I apologize in advance. Uh, but it is uh, Tropical Storm Angrek. Angrek, I hope I am saying that correctly. The system right now looks pretty good. You can see a well-defined low-level center it exists beneath this convection here, sustaining over that center. So it is de definitely a tropical cyclone. And you can also see some upper-level cirrus here extending away to the south and even to the north of the system, indicating a fairly low shear environment. Now, there is some slight shear. There is a little bit of westerly shear Aloft, it's very weak winds, but there is a little bit of that shear aloft, and that is uh, possibly contributing to a little bit of a tilt in structure seen in models. You can see this is the mid level relative humidity, and the wind barbs are also in the mid levels as well. But the contours here is the mean sea level pressure, so this is in the low levels, and you can see the low level center is here on the GFS, but in the mid levels, we've got the mid level center to the northwest of it. So we've got this little bit of tilt with height on the model. Now this should keep the system from rapidly intensifying as this will likely stop the system from developing a quick inner core that it could intensify into a cyclone in. But it won't stop some gradual intensification and we're likely to see at least some gradual intensification of this system over the coming days. You can see that here in the Bureau of Meteorology forecast. You can see them forecasting a Category 2 storm out of this as it comes south. Coming right now on this forecast west of Cocos Island. But this cone does extend and include the island. So it is still possible that some impacts are brought there. Uh, even more significant than staying out to sea if it does come a little bit closer. And we do have a cyclone watch in place for the island. Now after the Cocos Island... Uh, track we're not likely to see the system go anywhere in quick fashion you can see on the gfs 850 millibar plot we've got an, a ridge developing uh closer to day five to the south of the system and this will begin to bend the system towards the west away from cocos island and by this time as well we'll also be getting a little bit of shear impacting the system you can see the impacts of that here on the european relative humidity plot Here's the low-level center and mid-level center is uh, placed a little bit further west of the system on this model. 
So we've got that tilt still in the structure, but we've also got a little bit of dry air here and some of the shear is out of the east. So this dry air is going to try and get entrained into the center and that will likely weaken the storm here. And overall, the flow is not too strong here and the system will likely very slowly move or just sit around here southwest of Cocos Island for the next several days after passing very close and we don't really expect anything significant out of the system over the coming days there is still some potential that the system might get caught by a little bit of a trough off of western australia you can see this here on the gfs ensemble 850 millibar uh, plot we have this bridge developing like i showed you just before developing but on this forecast cone like i talked about if it does it has some potential to uh, trend a little bit east of the current forecast. And if it does do that, there is a little bit of a trough here off the coastline of Western Australia. You can see that in the wind barbs here. And if the system is, say, a little bit further east, it's possible that that trough tries to catch the storm a little bit. Now, there will also be some westerly winds aloft, so that may also... If the storm is, say, stronger, stop this scenario from occurring. But if it is maybe a little bit weaker... And a little bit further east, there is that potential for some uh, movement towards the east. And whether or not that leads to anything significant happening further east, it's way too early to tell. It's just something to monitor over the coming days. But you can see the potential for that eastward bend on the Bureau of Meteorology track. You can see their track for the storm sort of goes in both ways, going west and east on this. And for the Cocos Island, and uh, Christmas Island is just something to pay attention to over the coming days as the system sits around. Now you can also see the other two systems we're, we're going to be talking about. We still got the same systems. If you remember before uh, Tropical Cyclone Below got started, we had 3U in Northern Australia and 5U off the coastline of Queensland. Those systems are still active here. We're going to touch on 3U first. This is still that broad area of low pressure sitting over northern Australia. Now, significant development of the system is not anticipated. You can see in this Bureau of Meteorology forecast, the, in, uh, the probability of development remains low, very low, in fact, throughout the entire forecast. And that's simply just because the system's sitting on, over land and has been for the past week. Now, the system sitting over land does still have the capabilities to bring a lot of moisture from, say, the Gulf of Carpentaria or say from the Indian Ocean over portions of land and that will lead to the potential for significant rainfall to continue across northern Australia. You can see that potential highlighted well by the GFS Ensemble mean rainfall over the next five days with rainfall totals in some areas exceeding 100 millimeters over the next five days. Now there might be some potential for the system to develop. You can see the GFS does towards uh, day five more so get a broad trough to develop out of this system it sort of weakens and just broadens out into a trough if this does occur we might have to watch somewhere like the gulf of carpentaria or the indian ocean here on either end of the trough to see if something may try to spin up there uh, but right now nothing too significant is on the models and you can see on the european right now a lot of the ensemble members, in fact, the majority of them are keeping the system on shore and then eventually diving the system southwest, maybe eventually finally getting the system out of northern Australia. It's already been here for about a week and we've got, what, five plus more days to deal with this low. So eventually we'll get it out of here and we'll keep an eye out for potential tropical cyclone development, but nothing imminent right now and nothing too significant uh, right now looks to be on the way. Now, finally, we have Tropical Low 5 view here. This system right now is sitting off the coastline of Queensland. You can see this here. Now, if you remember, we had 3 U sitting here off the coastline of, West, of the, Northern, the Northern Territories in Western Australia, and 5 U was another lobe of low pressure across the Gulf of Carpentaria. That has traversed Queensland. It is now in the Coral Sea into the Pacific Ocean. And now as the system comes into the Coral Sea further over the coming days, development appears pretty likely here in some fashion. You can see on the GFS over the coming days, we're going to see the system continue westwards. And now on the GFS, we've got a little bit of a trough here uh, extending from about Queensland into 
uh, the middle of the Coral Sea. Now, this does lead to some variability. Exactly where does a center develop here along this trough? The GFS right now looks to sort of bundle it up more in the central or eastern part of the trough, and that results in a more eastward track. You can see that as I go through this run, you can see the center and eastern part sort of converge into a tropical cyclone. And by day five, we have a storm here diving south west of New Caledonia. On the European, though, we have less of a broad signature and we have a more westward system on this model. So we end up having a more westward track. And by day seven, we've got a storm here off the coastline of Queensland. You could see that there's a ridge here. Could that potentially go towards Queensland eventually in the track? And that's one of the questions we'll have to answer over the next week. Now, development of the system is not going to be fast. As you can see, five to seven days is the time from here of when we could be looking at a tropical cyclone active on both of these models. Uh, but development odds appear high. And you can see that here in the Bureau of Meteorology forecast. As we go through the latter half of this weekend into early next week, development becomes high with a large area of uncertainty on exactly where it may track. You can see some of the uncertainty that we have in terms of track on the GFS ensemble plot. This shows a lot of the members, I think all of the members, and you can see the red numbers there are areas of low pressure from each member. And each of these red numbers is a spot where our storm could be in the next seven days. So we've got a potential track for New Caledonia. We've got a potential track for uh, Southern Queensland. We've got a potential track even for Northern Queensland. I'm showing you this to, to depict the uncertainty that exists here. And while development is likely over the next week in the Coral Sea, any questions of where it may go eventually, we can't answer that right now. There's a lot of variability on timing. As you can see here, the GFS is farther south by day five. Uh, here, it's, 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 it's further south, closer to New Caledonia by day five, but on the European by day seven, we don't even have the system... Uh, halfway across the Coral Sea into, you know, potentially near Vanuatu or New Caledonia. And that has some impacts on the pattern down south as well. Uh, if you look at the GFS, we don't really have that strong of a ridge down here. Could we have a little bit more troughing? We have a big area of low pressure here. Could this track the system towards the southeast? On the other hand, with the Euro being slower, it allows some time for a ridge to build south of the storm. And could that potentially track the storm into Queensland? That's a lot of scenarios here, and it's just going to be something to monitor over the coming days. For those along the coastline of Australia, and for those in New Caledonia, the most important thing to do right now is just monitor the situation and stay tuned to your local weather office and your official Tropical Cyclone Warning Center. I'll leave some links at the top of the description so you can click those uh, agency websites and go directly to them to get the latest information. And I'll have future uploads throughout the next several days over this system as we do uh, go in time and see more development trends on models. Well, that's all that I've got for now. The Southern Hemisphere is going to get a little bit active. I'll leave you all with the satellite image of Tropical Cyclone Bilal. Uh, once again, stay safe in all the areas that are going to be impacted by some of these storms over the next week, and I hope everyone is safe in La Reunion and Mauritius. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.